Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with another tutorial for ADSRSounds.com and SilentTutorials.com. In today's video, we're going to be checking out how you can make or emulate a kind of like an electric guitar or a palm muted electric guitar pluck. So a lot of genres from pop, hip-hop to EDM use this, so I thought I'd share with you how you can do it inside of Silent. Really quick, if you're not signed up or subscribed to this YouTube channel, please do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSRTuts, that's T-U-T-S. So let's just dive into this real quick. So this pink track up here, this is the guitar sound that we'll be recreating. Right, it sounds kind of like a palm muted electric guitar. I play electric guitar, so I uh, would prefer just to play this, you know, with a real electric, but it's a different type of sound. It has a different feel. So sometimes it's hard to get the type of sound that we've all come to associate with EDM or pop with uh, a real electric, sometimes they are done with a synth or a really basic sample. So I want to talk about this third party processing really quick that's adding to some of the sound. So I have a instance of just a Valhalla vintage verb on it. If I take that off, it doesn't change a whole lot. I also have the LFO tool doing or emulating some sidechain compression. If I take that off, it's still the same sound. What I did end up doing that actually has a pretty big effect on the sound is this just this little EQ cut this cutting out some of the high frequencies here from about 5k up if I turn that off you know it's a little bit snappier but that's something that you could leave in I mean in an EDM song a lot at times you'll have the electric guitar type sound come in during a like the the pre-course leading into the breakdown and it'll do this type of filter sweep Right? And then, so one other thing I want to talk about really quick before we actually get into making the sound. This is really important if you are trying to emulate uh, really any real world physical instrument inside a synth. You have to be always, you have to always be cognizant and aware of how this instrument reacts physically in the real world. So with electric guitars, they're most often played with a pick. And if let's just think about this real quick. Even if you don't play guitar, this will make sense once you once you give it a little bit of thought. If I hold down two or three strings on an electric guitar and I start strumming from top down, I'm going to first hit the first string that I'm pressing, right? So let's say you're pushing just the first three strings. I'm going to hit the first one, then the pick's going to hit the second one, then it's going to hit the third one. And that's what helps contribute to a guitar sound. It's different than with a piano where you can make the piano hit, you know, that you can have the hammers hit all at the same time. You're always going to have this little delay between unless you're finger picking and you actually pick each string individually but when you're picking with an with an electric guitar and a pick it, there's going to be this slight delay with the notes that you're hearing whether you're strumming down or upwards if you're strumming down the first note that you're going to hit is always going to be the first string followed by the second string third string and so on when you're strumming up it's the inverse it's the reverse of that you're going to hear the the higher tones first which is why guitarists like to do up down rhythms to vary the tones that you hear so that being said, with this MIDI, I didn't do it all the way through, but I did go through and do some of it. So if I zoom in here on some of these MIDI notes, uh, you'll see, actually, let me just open up the, the actual whole MIDI window. So we'll just open up the piano roll here, full screen, so you guys can see this a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, look at this. So the first note is quantized to happen right on the down of the one. But, but you can see here this this top note right here, because if I'm playing a real guitar, that's going to be picked second. See how there's this little space? And this is arbitrary. So this is a down-up pattern right now. So it goes down, up, down. Uh, so strumming down, which means you're going to hear the lower notes first. And then when you strum up, you'll hear the higher notes. So listen to these first two hits. That's what creates that realism. So there's another down right here. So it's mainly down, up, down, 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 up. So these first three hits, if I slow the tempo down, the tempo of this track down, uh, we will you'll be able to hear this pretty easily. Right? So that just gives it that realism. So with that being said, let's jump into actually creating the sound inside of Silent. All right, so I will turn off the uh, EQ and the reverb just so you can hear what this needs to sound like just inside of Silent. So I have a zeroed out sound. First thing I'm going to do is we're, we're not going to touch anything here in the polyphony. You can keep it on three. If you need to play more notes, you can 
turn that up. But we're just going to be using part A for this sound. So we don't have to do anything with part B, which is nice. All right, so the most important thing in the oscillators would be to choose a uh, waveform that isn't a saw or a sine. I, I, I use the Q pulse. Uh, it's kind of good for that palm muting sound. Then what I did was the volumes up all the way. I have the phase here turned down to zero, and then the detune, no detune. I keep the stereo and pan where they are. I turn the voices up to eight, and I keep re-trigger on, because if you think about an electric guitar, here's an example where you need to be aware of the physical instrument. It's always going to re-trigger, right? You're picking something. So let's see what we got now. <laughs> Sounds pretty weird, but let's just keep chucking along here. Now the amp envelopes can be important as well. Uh, the attack have down at zero. Uh, the decay, we're going to turn the decay up to about 5.98 or close to there, so just a shade under six, maybe. All right, the sustain, the sustain of a guitar, this is dependent on how you how you play it, but it's not gonna be full full sustain like in a synth or a piano, so we'll turn this to about 4.66. Uh, six. Let's turn the release up to about five, because guitar strings tend to ring out a little bit. 5.27, maybe. All right, so that's starting to sound a little bit better. Let's move over to oscillator A2 now, and we're going to choose another one of Scion's probably lesser used waveforms here. We're gonna choose this triangle saw wave. For the voices, let's turn this up to five, so it's not as thick as the first oscillator with the Q pulse. And again, we're gonna recheck, re-trigger. So I'm getting some phase issues, so I'm going to turn the phasing up a little to about maybe 75 degrees. Now, oddly enough, I am going to detune this one just a little bit, and I might come back and turn this, uh, this amount down once I get my filter set up, but let's just turn this up to about four. It's kind of just widening the sound right now is all it's doing. Keep the stereo where it is, and that's all we're going to do in the oscillators. So let's go to our filter now, and we're going to choose a low-pass filter type for this specific sound. Now with the cutoff amount, you're just going to turn this down just a little to about 115 hertz, I think it is. All right, and then I boosted the resonance a little bit. You don't have to do that, but I liked how it sounded. So I'll, I'm going to turn that up to about, I think it's like 138. And then I added a little bit of drive too, just to push the sound a little bit harder. All right, now in the master filter control, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna end up modulating my cutoff with an envelope shape that kind of mirrors what a guitar would really do in, in terms of the decay, sustain, release, and attack. So I'm gonna turn this filter down a lot right now. It's gonna kill the bulk of the sound. So I'm gonna turn it to about three point. 3.61 around there. And it doesn't matter where you have the resonance or anything right now, but let's go to our first envelope and choose cutoff. We'll do cutoff A. You choose A, B too, it doesn't really matter. And then let's get the ADSR of this dialed in. So the decay needs to be about 5.06, which is basically around what I set the decay for the amp envelope. So we'll do 5.06, it's a little bit less. Now the sustain, this is the filter that we're affecting here. So I don't want too much sustain in the filter. I want more sustain coming from my amp envelope. So with the sustain volume, we're gonna do maybe just a shade under two. So maybe 1.90. And then for the release, we're gonna crank this release up quite high to about almost nine, so high eights. All right, and let's actually turn this little rotary knob up so we get some effect on this sound. I'm going to turn it up to about eight, I believe. All right, you start to have that picking type sound right now. Kind of like a palm muted uh, electric guitar. So now let's add in the pick noise. I am going to go to my second envelope, my modulation envelope. And I'm going to choose pitch. I'm just going to choose pitch A and B. You could just choose A if you wanted. Uh, for this, I'm going to turn the rotary knob up just a pinch to maybe like 2.2, 2, 
2.29. And now with the decay, I am just going to boost this just a little bit to about 0.23. It's adding, it's adding a kind of, if you just get the, uh, or if you just get the decay about 0.23. If you do it too much, it'll sound like a synth, but just a little bit helps here. And then I might add cutoff to this as well, just to further thicken the sound. And then for the rotary knob value, I'm going to do about two again. So just, just really small changes here. And then I think I had a uh, LFO modulating the phase of my oscillator or oscillators A. And I think I had the rate running at, I think it was like, a, like I think it was running free to about right there, about 88 hertz. And then I just kind of boosted this a little. But there is the sound. Now let's create some of the effects. Well, distort you use, you use distortion sometimes with an electric guitar. So I use the overdrive or the clip. You can use whichever one. I like the overdrive for this the sound. I had the dry wet about 50% of the amount down a lot. That's just something you can do to taste. Now, an interesting effect for this is the phaser. I use sometimes the phaser. I'll sometimes use the phaser in silent to... Uh, kind of color the sound I guess so let's let's see how this works see how it's moving right now well I'll put it on a slow rate so uh, well, let's do the center frequency and just kind of work left to right center frequency I'm going to do about 4.67 now the spread we're going to turn down because we're not using this as a stereo effect so much as a coloring effect so I'll turn the state the the spread down to about 1.6 I think it is all right now the left right offset will keep where it is the width keep where it is the LFO rate, which is going to be that, that swooshing sound that you hear, I'm going to turn it down all the way to 8 over 1, 1 D. The LFO gain, I'm going to turn down all the way to 0. And I'm going to turn the dry wet up. It's taken out a little bit of the high-end release of that plucky sound. Yeah, I will use the phaser sometimes to color the sound more or less inside of Sinoth. Next, I even had the coarse effect on. This just helped thicken it up. So for the delay, uh, we're going to put the delay at about, I believe it's turning, let's turn it up about 21 milliseconds. Keep the rate where it is if you're trying to make the sound exactly. The depth, you can keep it at about 40%, which should be by default. Keep it on dual mode which adds four coursing effects, I believe, instead of just the two, so it's kind of misleading, but it makes it thicker. The width, keep up all the way, and just turn down the dry wet to taste. So let's turn off the effects and see what this sounds like. And now with the first three. All right, the EQ, it doesn't really matter what you do in the EQ if you're gonna do a third party EQ cut like I did, like this one. But if you want to do the EQ I did, I had it on one pole. I had the bass where it is. I turned up the bass frequency a little, the treble frequency a little bit, and then I turned down the uh, actual treble frequency to the right. And then finally, of course, it's an electric guitar. Usually electric guitars have some type of reverb and delay on them. So I did for the delay left, I believe it was a quarter note delay time. You can do anything really. I mean, you can get crazy with this and have the long delays like U2 and all those people, Coldplay. Um, let's do, do for the delay right time, I'll do, we'll do an eighth. So we'll make it a little bit quicker for the right delay. Low cut, I turn up just a little bit just to not let through as many of the low frequencies. I turn up the high cut as well. Uh, the smear, had it down all the way. The spread about halfway. Feedback, totally up to you. The width, totally up to you. I like cranking it up. Dry, wet, down to taste. All right, and I even had a little bit of reverb happening inside of Silent, and I had this dry wet turned down a lot so I could use a third party reverb, but I'll show you how to get a cool reverb sound inside of the synth. Turn the size down to about halfway, keep the width up, turn the dry wet down a little bit, turn the pre delay down. Typically on electric guitars, you don't have a lot of pre delay on your reverbs. 
and it's just a little bit of that feel. So if I bring back in my reverb that I had and the EQ, There you have it. It's a electric guitar style sound in a synth. Cool. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't checked out ADSRsounds.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things production related. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.